Uh, we just try to not make too many copies, so bring them back if you uh, take one, and uh, uh, we'll make sure we have lots of them in here anyway. And so that's at both those meetings as well. Um, the Rockland uh, plan will be available at the church next. No, it won't be available. Well, it will be at the church next Sunday, but you'll be here. Anyway, it's uh, getting up there, and I'll bring uh, some of, uh, of Rockland's uh, next week as well. Uh, so those are the announcements that we have, some advanced announcements there for you to consider. We light this candle remembering that Jesus is with us. Jesus will guide us along the way. And we truly do need the light of Jesus today. We remember <coughs> the struggling and uh, suffering on the part of many people in Canada today, even though it is Thanksgiving weekend. We remember also the horrible things happening around the world, such as the uh, bombing in Turkey and so forth. Uh, there are many parts of the world that really need the light of Jesus in this time. So we remember this, and then we remember that we follow in the light of Jesus. And let's join together in 517. Praise God for the harvest, 517. May we live as 
Cloud responsive song is 126, 850 in the hymn book, 850. Now this the second uh, refrain, <coughs> and so that's 850. <laughs>
glad for all those people who make a tofu, tofu, the hell we say it, uh, turkey, uh, because then uh, they don't uh, end their lives. But anyway, we're glad for those kinds of gatherings and lots of things, right? Thankful for the day, right? Yeah, we're thankful for all of those uh, creations of, of God that we have in the garden. Isn't that wonderful all the things that God gives to us in this time of the harvest? Now, we have an arrangement here that Karen and Helen's daughter made from all the flowers that were found that God had made and that helped to grow. And uh, we have a display of items from the whole garden that look almost fake because they look so good, but they're really in good shape. And God has given good produce. And so God has given us lots to be thankful for today. And uh, we want to give thanks to God for all of that. And it's a beautiful fall day. And some of us have brought items for the food bank to help out those who need some food, right? Okay. So would you like to go and get some of the items from the food for the food bank? And we'll put them right here at the at the uh, meal table. Okay. Just anybody wave out there if you've got food, and uh, uh, we'll come and get them. Okay. Want to go get food? Up under, uh, up under here is good. Up under here is good. Right here. Yeah. That's good. And there's other items. And there is one up there. You can go and get that at some point, I guess. Yeah. You like to help each other, right? Okay. Over here. Over here, there's some hands. Oh, great. Drag it along. That's good. Lots of stuff in those bags. Oh, it's so big and heavy. <laughs> people are so generous to give to the people at the uh, Flamboro uh, Food Day. And so let's have a prayer together. You can repeat after me. And, uh, everyone will join in and help. And we bow our heads, close our eyes. Oh, gracious God. Oh, gracious God. I thank you. I thank you. For all you have given to me. Thank you for these items that we are able to give to people in need. Amen. It's great. A great thing to give you.
we have lots of anxieties and worries about the future. Some of us might be classed as worry warts, but I think anxiety is something that affects all of us. In fact, it's uh, claimed that uh, in our culture, 15% of people have some kind of debilitating anxiety. And lots of people use sedative drugs, and including alcohol and non-legal drugs. And there is an ongoing search that we have for peace. We want to try to find meaning in our lives. Uh, we seek it often through religion, sometimes through yoga, sometimes through relaxation exercises, sometimes through escape, like entertainment and travel. We do all kinds of things to try to relax and relieve some of our anxieties. We worry a lot. We worry about our families, even though there is so little we can do about it. I often was quite thankful when my kids went off to university because then I didn't know when they were coming home late at night. It's always handy. You don't have to worry when they're on the side. But we worry about our families and our concern for them. Uh, we worry about some of those things in our lives that we can't control. Uh, we are often some challenges in families and sometimes uh, endings in divorce and all of that that can come as such a surprise. Those things that we seem to feel are so much out of our control. And we worry about the economy. Increasingly so, I think, in the last decades. How are we going to make a living? Sometimes it seems kind of tenuous. We're not sure how things are going to work out for us. Some now worry about are we going to uh, run out of our money before we uh, run out of our lives as we enter into retirement. And our health problems can hit us so fast and so hard and so unexpectedly. Every ache and pain and every checkup, we can worry about what might be there. And so in the midst of all of this anxiety that we have within our lives, Jesus' words would seem to be very powerful. He says, don't worry about life. Remember, remember the lilies of the field? And it's a very memorable and moving passage. And yet, maybe it doesn't help us all that much. It seems so idealistic. And maybe it just makes us worry about our guilt that we are worrying too much. It seems so idealistic that it might be seen to be insensitive to the poor and to the unemployed and to all of those who really have good reason to worry in our world today. And for the word words, it doesn't seem very practical, or is it? The Protestant theologian Paul Tillich characterized the most prominent modern anxiety as spiritual. That is, we suffer from emptiness and meaninglessness. If Tillich uh, diagnoses that that's the root of our anxiety, maybe the Jesuit theologian Anthony de Mello, following Jesus' advice, offers a cure. De Mello said, you sanctify whatever you are grateful for. In other words, instead of nursing our worries and anxieties, change the focus. Look elsewhere beyond self-absorption and cultivate a grateful heart. Be glad for all of these things around us that are given to us by God. The ease of this cure is what makes it seem unrealistic. Remember the Old Testament story of Naaman, the commander of the army of the king of Aram. And that story is found in 2 Kings. And he sought out the prophet Elisha to heal him of his leprosy. But Elisha instructed Naaman to go and wash in the Jordan seven times. And Naaman became angry. The cure was too easy. Surely that's not what I have to do to be cured of this horrible disease that has changed my life. When at last Naaman followed Elisha's instructions, his flesh was restored to that of a young man. 
So sometimes getting over our problems and diseases and our anxieties in life are much more simple than <coughs> one would expect. The instructions might be to take something that is simple and common and to give thanks for it. A bird, a flower, a blade of grass. One small step to move beyond the anxieties. That's a pattern that we have for so many practices that we are instructed in our lives. We might, for example, take two buckets. Into one bucket, we put all those things that we can control. And in the second bucket, put all those things that we can't control. And so you put all your worries into the buckets. And there is one where you know you can't do anything about it. So the guidance may be to just forget about that because you can't do anything about it anyway. That's the rational thing to do. But those things you can control and can do something about, you can start working on and focusing on to take attention away from the second button. That's pretty much the program of the 12 steps that uh, was made well known throughout the Alcoholics Anonymous but of other uh, self-help programs as well. For someone who is in Alcoholics Anonymous, it is known that they are powerless over the addiction, that they can't do anything about it. That's a given. But there are things that they can do. They can. They do a personal inventory of your life. Pray to God about this and seek power and guidance from that. Uh, go and make amends to those who you feel that you have offended. Go to them and ask for forgiveness. So there are lots of things that can be done that we have control over that take the focus away from those things we can't control and so take away our worries and our anxieties. Keep busy on bucket one and let's focus on bucket two. And so the Serenity Prayer was written by Richard Niebuhr, a minister in the States and is used quite commonly by Alcoholics Anonymous, but also by many other people. It's a very powerful prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference by adopting gratitude, thankfulness for all those things that we have around us. We can discover God's abundance it's not a thing. But gratitude takes math out of the equation. When gratitude replaces anxiety, even when we find we have less than we had during our worry days, gratitude reveals that we have far more than we need. Look at the birds of the air. Consider the lilies of the field. Jesus wasn't being idealistic. He was really being practical. Medical science has shown that by not worrying, we could add to our lifespan. We don't have to worry about our lives day to day, what we are going to eat or drink or wear. Nor do we have to worry about our children's needs. All we have to do is say thank you, God, knowing that what needs to happen will, and the rest is not all that important. Having a grateful heart and a grateful mind is the secret to relieving ourselves of our worries and anxieties. Let us join in prayer. Oh gracious God, we thank you for the words from Scripture. They are very much in our hearts and minds and um, are a very visible sign of your grace to us. Help us to be able to take these words to heart that we might overcome our anxieties and worries about the future that we might just be grateful for all that you have given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. And our hymn is 577. I've got peace like a river 577.
and um, let us um, receive our offering. Uh, God has blessed us. We are thankful, and so we give our thanks to Him. Your offerings will.
that you have provided a great harvest. In the spring, we planted. We depended on you for sunshine and warmth and for moisture. And the miracle of the birth of new plants took place. And so we thank you, O oh God, for all the produce that we have had over the summer and for the beauty of our gardens and for the bounty that has been given to farmers. We remember those who farm, who have to struggle quite often because of weather and because of markets. But, oh God, we are so thankful for the bounty of the land and for this creation that you give to us. And each of us has our own prayers of thanksgiving and concern that we want to raise up to you. And we take a few moments in silence now just to raise up our prayers to you.
Fill your mind with those things that are good and deserve praise, things true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Put into practice what you have heard here, and may the God who gives peace be with each of you. Amen.